So over the past year, I've been upgrading my setup and I wanted to just show what it looks like now as a pretty much finished product. Uh, I might put a couple of decorations on the desk because it does look kind of naked, so to speak, uh, other than the peripherals that are on there. So I think we're going to start off by talking about like the peripherals and then we're going to talk about the desk and the chair, what I use for those. And then we're going to move on to the actual system itself. Um, so the monitor, so this is just a Samsung monitor. I don't know the name. I know it's a 75 Hertz refresh rate panel. This is my secondary monitor. I use it for like anything that's not gaming pretty much. Um, so yeah, didn't really care what like the specs were. This is the gaming monitor. So as you can see, it's dirty here. Uh, this light actually brings out a lot of that, <laughs> but we'll talk about the light after. So this is the Alienware. Again, the names they give for these are all but memorable, but this is a 1080p 240 Hertz TN panel. So when I purchased this uh, 1440p 240 Hertz panels didn't exist, neither did 360 Hertz panels. So this is actually one of the older models. They don't make this specific model anymore. They changed like uh, what it looks like physically, like the, the bezels and all that and the actual uh, form of the monitor that changed that a little bit. But yeah, this is actually a couple of years old now. I think I've had it for three years give or take, not quite sure on that, but I did do a full review on this monitor if you wanna go and check it out. There'll be a link in the description down below, but definitely uh, having something with such a high refresh rate, you can tell when you're playing video games or just generally using your computer, uh, it is buttery smooth having that really high refresh rate. So if you're still on a 60 Hertz panel, maybe think about upgrading to 75, 120, 144, 165, there's a bunch of refresh rates available, but uh, you, you'll tell, you'll be able to tell the difference and you're gonna be glad you pulled the trigger on a higher refresh rate monitor. Moving on to the screen bar. So actually this was sent to me by Ben Q. So they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to test and have one of their screen bars for my setup. And I said, sure, I was looking for a lighting solution uh, for my desk and for my setup. So I really actually enjoy the screen bar a lot. Um, you can change the intensity of the light here with the, the easy just touch and then it goes down and if you touch it again the intensity goes back up you can change the warmth of the color so you can go a little bit warmer to very warm and then you can go back to very cool so i tend to use the cooler mode during the day and then at night when i want to relax or you know have all the lights turned off and play something i just put it to the warmer mode so like the yellow color and you also have an automatic mode here i prefer controlling it myself because sometimes uh you know it the the lighting in here varies a lot because i have a window to my left so i just rather uh, tune it to whatever i prefer and you can also turn it on and off obviously with just this button here you turn it back on so this is actually powered by usb you don't need any external power uh, it's a usb type c cable which is very welcome usb mini cables are are you know pretty bad so very glad that they have a usb type c cable in there so you just plug that into your computer and every time you power up your computer it'll turn on to your last saved setting which is very awesome uh the one thing i didn't think about here though is the mount so my monitor is extremely thick so i'm just going to show you guys here it is a thick thick monitor so the mount actually uh, didn't fit on my monitor so I kind of like did a makeshift stand here so there's like three double-sided little pads there with like a memory a foam on top to like hold the screen bar in place but I'm gonna get something that looks better than that but uh, yeah the screen bar definitely helps with eye fatigue after staring at my monitor for countless hours a day either working editing videos or playing video games and it just has a nice spotlight effect on my desk uh, it makes everything look really nice and also when I am working on paperwork or stuff like that it's it's nice to have a light that shines directly on what I'm doing as opposed to having it like the overhead light or the lamp in the back to the left so definitely a very nice product and a big thank you to BenQ for sending me this i'm happy to start working with them one of my first panels uh, 1080p monitors was a benq monitor i absolutely love that thing it lasted me for almost forever until i upgraded to a, a higher refresh rate panel but definitely happy to be working with benq and having the opportunity to test out their screen bar so here's just a quick before and after comparison of prior to getting the screen bar and after uh, it really brings out the setup and enhances the whole thing in my opinion so moving on, I have the Huanuo uh, double monitor arm here. I used to have my monitors just on the desk itself, um, but 
it was a little bit too low even at, at their highest it was a little bit too low for my neck so i was always like looking down a little bit but having the monitor arm i can put it at eye level and it also makes the desk look a lot cleaner without having uh, the monitor stands on the desk despite the Alienware monitor stand looking really awesome. Um, it, wa it wasn't adapted to what I needed. Uh, the monitor arm also serves as a USB hub. So you have two USB ports here. Uh, so as you can see, I have something plugged in here. So it it's actually a very functional arm. It wasn't all that expensive. It does the job. Uh, it's actually very sturdy and you can adjust it a bunch of different ways. So a very good buy rate there that I did. That's actually pretty recent as well. Moving on to the speakers. These are some pretty old Logitech speakers. It's supposed to be a 5.1 uh, system, but I ha only have the center speaker, the two side ones, and then the subwoofer down below. Um, but yeah, these are really old. I don't even remember the model name of them. These, these were my dad's and then he gave them to me and I'm still using them because they still work and they sound pretty decent for when I want to use speakers. Uh, moving on to the rest of the audio setup. So here are the Bayer Dynamics DT990 Pro's 250 ohm headphones. Um, so I had gaming headphones for the longest time and I, I eventually pulled the trigger and purchased a pair of uh, you know, arguably entry-level audiophile headphones, and boy, am I glad I did. So these are open back. I actually did a full review on them, despite not being that much of an audiophile. Uh, but yeah, they have a really nice open, like large soundstage. I don't think I, I worded that right. Uh, really good for positional audio. Absolutely love them. They're super comfortable, even for long periods or long gaming sessions the the ear pads on here super comfortable same thing for the headband nice and like mushy uh, but not too mushy so that you don't have like the the metal headband pressing on your your, your skull basically uh, so yeah definitely a good purchase there so these are plugged into the fio e10k uh, dac amp uh, when i purchased this i I didn't know as much about audio as I do now, but it's definitely a nice little amp DAC amp combo to have. Um, I don't think it's the best choice for the Bayer Dynamics DT990 Pro 250 ohms, but I still really do enjoy it. Uh, and eventually when I get like a more complex audio setup with like a an XLR microphone and all that, I might have to swap this out, but it definitely does the job. It was a pretty decent price and it, it is pretty good for powering uh, this set of headphones. This is just a small Ulanzi uh, headphones mount stand. So don't want to have them laying on the desk all the time. Uh, so you can just put it up and down like this as needed when you're using and not using it. Moving on to the microphone. So this is the Blue Yeti uh, USB microphone. Absolutely love this mic. I got it on sale a while back. I think this mic is now like six or seven years old, maybe more. Um, it served me great, great purchase uh, for a somewhat entry level microphone. It has a little uh, pop filter on here so you don't hear the P's and the B's as much. A windscreen as well. And this is on a Nuir uh, microphone arm. Not the best microphone arm. I will end up getting something better. This one kind of squeaks every now and then and you know, the cable's kind of gross looking on it and it's white. It doesn't really match with the rest of the setup, but for the price that I paid for it, it does the job. It's a really good purchase. Uh, this microphone, I got it on sale. Same thing for the arm. So you can get a pretty decent setup at a reasonable price. So moving on to the keyboard. So this is the Keychron K3 low profile mechanical keyboard. This is actually a keyboard that I uh, backed on Kickstarter and I waited quite a while for it. I got it last year. Um, they actually don't make the switches that I picked anymore. So if I take this one off, I have the Keychron uh, low profile optical switches on here. So these are actually made by Keychron themselves, uh, but they don't make the blacks anymore. There's only, I think, uh, red, mint, and yellow, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. But anyways, absolutely love this keyboard. I was looking for something low profile and mechanical. Um, because I don't like having really thick keyboards that I need a wrist rest to use. Uh, so my wrist is not like bent up like that. So I wanted something low profile and this really, really fits my needs. You can also use it wired or wireless. I opt for the wired and the keyboard is actually plugged in with a custom coiled cable. Uh, the cable that came with it was actually really short and, uh, you know, it doesn't look all that good on a desk. So I opted for a, a custom, uh, coiled cable here. There'll be a link to this one. I think it's a mech cable. It's something like Jedi, I forget the exact uh, color of it, but it looks really nice on the desk. And as you can see, I did my best to uh, cable manage, so there's not a lot of cables 
laying around so that it looks nice. Um, but there are unfortunately some cables that you can't really get rid of or you don't want to get rid of. I didn't want to have a, a wireless keyboard, which is why I wanted to get something that looks nice at least so that I can just leave the cable there. Uh, moving on to the mouse. So this is a Razer Viper Ultimate. So this is the wireless uh, version of the Viper. And actually this is pretty recent. I, I got it on sale, I think it was Boxing Day. So I used to have the wired version of this, but the wired version just kept getting stuck on like the corner of my case here and like everywhere. And it was driving me absolutely nuts. Um, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with wireless peripherals. For the longest time, I had a wireless headset from Logitech. And at first I really enjoyed it. And then I ended up hating it because there was always interference. And when I was in a dorm in a college, uh, I, I would start the microwave or something and uh, the there was so much interference between the microwave and the frequency that the headset was using that it would cause the headset to cut in and out. So I then opted for the bare dynamics uh, after that. But uh, wireless technology has come a long way, especially in mice in my opinion. And I did a lot of research prior to purchasing this. I used to have a wireless Razer Mamba. Uh, I think that's the one. And then that eventually uh, gave up on me after many years of use. And then I went back to wired and then I'm going back to wireless again, but I've been using this mouse for a couple of months now and absolutely love it. There's like pretty much zero difference from using a wired, the wired Viper and the wireless Viper, uh, but definitely a good purchase here. And I'm happy I went back to a wireless mouse. And for the mouse pad, so this is the Razer Goliathus Extended Stormtrooper Edition. Uh, I got this as a birthday present a couple of years back. When I first got it, um, my desk was actually too small to accommodate such a large desk pad, if you could call it, uh, which also prompted me to purchase something that was uh, that better fit my needs desk-wise. Moving on to the webcam. So this is a Logitech C920 1080p webcam, great for streaming or video conference calls. And this is on... I don't remember the name of this this stand here. Uh, there'll be a link. Pretty generic, just regular stand for phones or uh, webcams. So uh, yeah, nothing to say much there, but definitely a good little webcam. I don't think they make this exact model anymore. I think they make an upgraded version of it. I think it's a C922X or something like that. But uh, yeah, definitely a great webcam for the price that you pay for it. And then this right here is actually what I'm recording the audio with. So it's just the receiver. So not very interesting. For the chair, this is an autonomous uh, ergo chair. I think it's called. There'll be links to everything in the description down below. Um, but yeah, having a good chair is definitely a worthwhile investment. I had a pretty poor chair before, uh, but having something that you can adapt to your build and frame size is much better than having something that you can't change many of the or adjust many of the features on them so you know lumbar support the headrest the uh the arm rests the height of the chair i even have a little foot rest on here so if we go down here and look there's a little foot rest here that i can pull out and you know rotate so that i can rest my legs on there when i'm i'm tired of sitting down or when i just want to relax more uh, so i can be a little bit more like lazy and laying down these are actually some uh just memory foam armrest covers because that's the one downside of this chair. Uh, the armrests were kind of stiff and when I would sit down for long periods of time and have my arms resting on them, it would kind of end up getting sore. Uh, so I just bought some pretty standard uh, memory foam armrest covers and very comfortable actually. I also have a little footrest here uh, that is an ergo foam. So it's just nice to have my feet be on something else than like just regular flooring. It's more comfortable and you can also change its size to have the rounded side like down so you can kind of like rock your feet back and forth to get like more blood circulation and all that. So moving on to the desk. So this is also an autonomous uh, product. So I think this is the autonomous pro sit stand desk. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, so this is actually the mo one of the most recent purchases. I got this during Cyber Monday and actually got a really good deal on it. So when you are shopping for stuff be it peripherals, uh, you know, furniture for your, your your setup, anything, always look for sales. And if you can wait for sales such as Cyber Monday, because you can get really good deals on certain uh, parts, even my setup, I got really good deals on most of this stuff. So I was waiting for, for sales instead of purchasing as soon as I wanted it. I kind of waited a little bit before, uh, you know, pulling the trigger and getting some of these peripherals or accessories or furniture. So 
Really like the desk. I've been using it for about two months now. So it has some preset or you can you can save the the memory in the memory board here. You can save different height presets. So right now it's in my standing mode. And if I press number one here, it'll go back into my sit mode when I am sick of standing up. So it just everything's automatic and then boom, it's in the uh, sitting mode. I'm just gonna bring it back up here because it's easier to uh, show everything. So moving on to the workhorse of the setup. Uh, so the case is the MSI uh, MPG Secura 100R, I think. Uh, they love giving names that you can't actually pronounce or remember, but I'm pretty sure that's the name of the case. Uh, it's got a nice tempered glass side panel here. There's also a little bit of tempered glass here. Airflow is pretty good. And yeah, it just, I, I think it looks really nice. I'm just gonna take off the tempered glass side panel here because as you can see, there's quite a lot of reflection and when I'm talking about the internal of the PC, I wanna actually be able to point at stuff without you guys not being able to see it. So we'll be right back. All right, so the side panel is now off. By the way, the side panel looks nice, but pain in the ass to keep clean. I actually have to dust my computer a little bit here. Um, it's quite dusty where I live, so dust accumulates really fast. But anyways, so the power supply is a Corsair RM850 gold uh, rated 80 plus. So plenty of power there for what I have in this uh, system. The motherboard is an MSI uh, Mag B5 B550 Gaming Plus motherboard. Let me just check that real quick. Yeah, MSI MPG, MPG B550 Gaming Plus motherboard. Uh, has a little bit of RGB down there. As you can see, a lot of dust. Um, the chip that I'm using is the Ryzen 7 3800X. Um, very good for multitasking, do, using the computer as a workstation, so rendering videos, using Photoshop. Uh, yeah, it, it is a very, very powerful chip. So what I have cooling this is the MSI Mag uh, all-in-one liquid cooler. Um, so it actually keeps my chip pretty cool, as you can see here. Uh, CPU is about 41, 42 degrees, and then the GPU is at 52. Granted, the computer has been running all day, um, so there is some accumulated heat in there, but you know, it keeps everything nice and cool. As for the RAM, this is a kit of 2 times 16 gigabytes Corsair RGB RAM. I think the frequency is 3200 megahertz CL16. Uh, so nowadays, honestly, when you're building a computer, 16 gigs of RAM is kind of on the lower side, unless you're really only playing video games. But even then, some video games end up using quite a bit of RAM. Most notably, that comes to mind, Escape from Tarkov. Uh, when I have MSI Afterburner running, I frequently see it use upwards of 17 gigs of RAM. So the game itself is using more than 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, so you have, if you have anything else running on your computer that is also using RAM, like Discord or Chrome Open or something like that, then you might end up getting some issues. So. Nowadays, I just say go for 32 gigs. You'll have plenty of RAM if you're doing other things while also running a game. And obviously I'm using this computer to render, so 16 gigs wasn't sufficient. Moving on to the hard drive. So there is an NVMe behind that, that cooler right there. So that is a Western Digital Blue NVMe one terabyte hard drive, or SSD, I guess you'd call it. I say hard drive, but SSD. And I also have a WD Black uh, 500 gigabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. So I need to actually swap these two and put the WD Black, if you can focus, up here and then put that one down there because that actually can utilize PCIe Gen 4.0 uh, compared to the other one. So I have to actually swap them out and then reinstall Windows and all that. But that is a problem for future me. I also have a Western Digital Black 8 terabyte hard drive. Uh, in the drive cage that is actually behind here. So on the other side, if I opened that up, you would see it. Um, so recording obviously takes a lot of space. So having a very large hard drive was a must. And also have a work hard drive in there because this is also my work computer. It is a Samsung 850 Evo 240 gigabyte SSD. Uh, I didn't need anything too big, but I wanted to have a completely separate drive for my work. And finally, the GPU. This is an EVGA GeForce RTX 3080. I did get this at MSRP. I didn't buy into the scalpers. Um, don't ask me how I got it at MSRP. It is some black voodoo magic that I cannot speak of. If I did, I would have to uh, terminate you guys. So yeah, that is definitely a, a beast of a card and probably the nicest GPU I've ever had compared to uh, previous builds. So yeah, this, this computer uh, can pretty much run anything you throw at it easily, uh, except maybe Battlefield 2042. But uh, jokes aside, yeah, you, I can get some really, really good performance out of this system and I'm happy 
with the system I got. It's, it's honestly the best system I've ever had. And I think it looks really nice on top of that. So yeah, that does it for my setup video. If you have questions about anything that I talked about or showcased in this video, please let me know in the comment section down below. Everything should be linked down there. But again, and I can't stress this enough, if you are looking to upgrade certain parts of your setup, look for sales. Uh, that is the best gift you can do for yourself is look for sales. Also, you can download the Honey add-on if, if you're using it on a browser. So Chrome, I think it's also available on Firefox and many other browsers, but basically you can set up drop lists on Honey. Now this isn't sponsored. I literally used Honey to build my setup. Uh, so you can set certain pieces that you want to purchase on a drop list and uh, Honey will send you a notification when the price for that specific item has dropped. You can also put different parameters. So you could put like a drop list notification for the next 90 days if the price drops by 15% or more. And then if the price does drop in that specific time frame, Honey will send you an email notification saying, hey, this item dropped in price, it might be a good time to purchase it now. And that's pretty much how I built my setup. So I put drop lists for most of the items that I have and even even computer parts. So uh, components that I have in my system right now, I put them on the drop list and when they would drop in price, I would purchase them and then just save them all up until I had my complete build. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.